Hello everyone, uh, today I will be discussing about uh, soil formation with ring and rocks. This is a part of the topics for the soil science, uh, principles of soil science board exam for licensure exam for agriculture. Alright, uh, to start with, so, so we have the formation of soil parent materials. Okay, uh, the ones we are presenting here right now is the uh, factors of soil formations so we'll be talking about the different factors that would affect and eventually the properties of the resulting soils after a long process of withering so we have in here okay first the factors of soil formations include uh, uh, climate now we have a climate and another is organisms relief parent materials and of course time and all these factors uh, either act in uh, combined or interaction to form uh, kinds of soils or it will also act singly to uh, produce soils of different physical and chemical properties uh, for example so when you say climate so uh, the different um, components of climate we have rainfall and we have uh, temperature we have sunlight we have the wind okay so all those uh, climatic uh, factors would eventually affect the types of soils that will be produced to the process of withering okay and we also have organisms so organisms also affect the kinds of soils that will be produced to the process of withering. So when we say organisms, we're talking about uh, either micro or microorganisms. Uh, examples in microorganisms, bacteria, my, uh, fungus, and uh, any kinds of microorganisms that would affect the withering or decomposition of rocks. It also includes macro uh, animals. No. Uh, humans, plants, so included included therein. Okay, all those uh, factors under organisms would eventually affect the kinds of soils that will be produced to the process of withering. Okay, uh, also relief. Now, when we say relief, we're talking about the uh, configuration of the area. So it is is it hilly or it is flat or plain? Okay, or it is undulating. When we say undulating, so the terrain is uh, hilly you know, and mountainous. Okay, and another that would affect the the formations of the soil, the type of soil that will form is of course the parent materials. When we say the parent materials, we're talking about uh, rocks or uh, any uh, materials that uh, would be decompose forming into uh, soils uh, rocks is the major or the parent source of the so of the soil or the uh, the parent materials of the soils are usually rocks but there are some uh, parent materials this includes organic no? uh, organic parent materials so for example uh, there are rocks that could easily be uh, broken could easily be decomposed because there are some soft rocks and there are some hard rocks so there are some uh, degree of softness and hardness of rocks so the harder is the minerals within the rocks then uh, uh, the difficult is the parent materials to be uh, withered or to be decomposed uh, for example uh, different rocks do have different uh, chemicals in their structure and uh, for example there are uh, rocks rich in iron so eventually when the rock rich in iron when decomposed or when withered so we would expect uh, the resulting uh, soils rich in iron uh, for example is the parent material composed of magnesium then eventually we would expect uh, upon uh, withering to the last part of withering we would expect materials of 
as well as more magnesium or more calcium because their parent materials uh, composed of that particular types of elements okay meaning to say uh, the composition of the parent materials eventually would affect the kinds of soils that will be produced through the process of uh, withering so there we have time so time also affect the kinds of soil materials or types of soils that, we, that will be produced to the process of withering or decomposition okay for example uh, the longer the materials has been subjected to uh, withering of course uh, uh, the more finer is the soil the resulting soil but of course uh, when we say uh, time when the parent material has been subjected to a short period of withering so you would expect that the resulting soils would be uh, composed of larger particles because this has been through a short period of withering so in see time we're talking about the age of the soils that has been subjected to withering and decomposition all right for example you have uh, uh, primary rocks and other parent materials so uh, primary rocks we have uh, boulder rocks or uh, so any uh, rocks for that matter in these rocks primary rocks and other parent materials including organic when subjected to this uh, and acted upon this uh, factors of soil formation or factors of withering these primary rocks and other parent materials will be decomposed into a finer grains or particles so you can say that go then subjected to uh, this uh, subjected to these uh, factors then that prior primary minerals will be broken down into a finer grains or particles then the same uh, factors climate organism relief and materials and time also acted acted on to the finer grains particles then the finer grains particles will eventually uh, withered decompose into a secondary minerals okay so look at that so all these uh, minerals has been derived from this primary rocks which has been subjected into the process of withering by the actions of these different factors so we have the primary minerals finer grains then secondary minerals then these secondary minerals we have different types of secondary minerals we have two is to one and one is to one then the secondary minerals also subjected to the same factors of withering in this can the secondary minerals will be uh, withered will be broken down into uh, oxides or hydrous oxides of iron and aluminum so therefore uh, when we look at the uh, process of soil formation starting from the primary minerals then eventually the primary minerals because of factors of withering so uh, they're uh, broken down into uh, smaller pieces and then eventually into uh, secondary minerals then we the two is to one minerals also subjected to the same types of withering then this two is to one will be decomposed into one is to one types of actually that is clays no types of clays then the one is to one type of clays will be subjected to the same factors of withering then forming into oxides and hydrous oxides of iron and aluminum so from this uh, presentation alone so we can uh, conclude that older soils old soils composed mainly of oxides and hydrous oxides of iron and aluminum so uh, when when the uh, witherings has been completed the, pi the final products of witherings of rocks and minerals uh, would be oxides and hydrous oxides of iron and aluminum so whenever we see soils rich in oxides and hydrous oxides of iron and aluminum then we would expect that that soils has been through a long period of withering and uh, that soils is considered as an old old soils no okay so itong mga secondary minerals uh, mga mature soils sila dili pa sila old so eventually mga decompose ang tudnay mo sa oxides hydrous oxides of iron and aluminum 
Therefore, also whales rich in iron oxides considered as old. And also, so whales rich in aluminum oxides or aluminum hydroxides, then those so whales are considered as old so whales. Okay? And uh, they are not fertile. No? So the fertile so whales usually does belongs to uh, mature so whales. Uh, usually so whales with uh, secondary types of minerals. Uh, generally, those so whales considered as fertile and good for crop production. Alright, so we have a note in here. So mineral grains in rocks are broken apart by the process of physical withering. So when we say physical withering, so we're uh, talking about the uh, we're talking on the uh, broken downs of larger pieces into a smaller pieces. So our physical withering, no? because we also have a chemical withering. This unconsolidated materials is then subjected to forces of chemical weathering in the soil solution. So, uh, yung mga bigger particles, it has been partially broken down into unconsolidated small particles, will be subjected to chemical weathering. Then, uh, uh, chemical weathering uh, will uh, further the uh, weathering of materials into the last stage of withering which is rich in irons and hydroxides of aluminum and iron. So this unconsolidated material is then subjected to forces of chemical withering in the soil solution being converted to more stable secondary soil minerals and solutes. So more stable, so the more stable minerals is of course yung one is to one and oxides of iron and oxides of aluminum. They are considered as stable because uh, they are the last and the final product of withering. Okay. These solutes can be leached out which can accelerate withering. When we say solutes, so yung mga particles that has been suspended in uh, water. Uh, okay. So that's it. So that about the factors of swell uh, formation. So as a sort of review for this slide, so the factors that would affect uh, the soil formation or factor affects the withering climate, organism, relief parent materials and time. If we are to, uh, uh, what's this? If we are to uh, code this one as an acronym, so we can acronym this one as CLORPT. C L O R R P and time or the CLORPT. CLORPT. Okay, take note for that. So next slide. See. So, yeah. So, as a sort of review, factors of cell formation, sinabi ko kanina, ito yun. So, okay. Itong factors na to act on the particles, then the process of withering, resulting of swells of different swell uh, properties, of different uh, characteristics. Okay, this is the general view of swell formation through withering. So, we have different types of parent materials or unconsolidated materials swells forms in uh, different processes so what do we call those swells that does derive from different parent materials and different sources so for example uh, materials swells forms in uh, residual parent material when we say residual we're talking about uh, swells form from withering of rocks in place so form from withering of rocks in place meaning to say there is uh, rocks on a place in a particular area and that rocks has never been moved and uh, that rocks will be uh, withered, will be decomposed within the area without any uh, sort or form of uh, translocation to that material. So I mean to say, yung rocks that has been decomposed within the place then forms into a soil in that place uh, that materials that, that soil material is considered as residual parent material or residuum residuum okay so uh, residual parent materials requires moisture heat and time million of years before the rocks will be converted into soils so of course uh, as factors of uh, soil formation moisture as a component of uh, climate heat is also a component of climate and times so it takes millions of years to form rock at uh, the form soils from the rocks. Okay. 
So, parent materials, when you say the parent materials is rich in calcium, then the resulting uh, residuum soils, of course, will be rich in calcium. So, limestone weeders completely leaves no residuum. Okay, uh, limestone, example of that is calcium carbonate. No? Uh, the white stone that we often see, we often uh, observe in the mountains. So, limestone weeders completely leaves no residuum. When the limestone weeders uh, we cannot uh, distinguish, we cannot identify uh, the parent materials because it withers completely. So, no withering of rocks at all in arid regions. So, you see arid regions, we're talking about the regions of uh, uh, very few rains in the area. Example of the arid regions, we have the, uh, Saudi Arabia, no? uh, yung mga dry areas, ulang ulan. So, if you can see uh, the, uh, if you can observe uh, in Saudi Arabia, so more on, uh, more on sand, because uh, no withering at the area, because always hot, but seldom uh, we can observe rain in their area. So no withering of rocks at all in arid regions, uh, okay, because. Uh, uh, no chemical reaction because no water present in the area. Okay, that is the residual parent materials or the residuum, the materials form in place. Okay, so another uh, parent materials we have transported parent materials. So, transported means to say uh, the soil has been transferred from one place to another. For example, uh, when we have water. Uh, we have uh, soils carried by the flowing water uh, that is uh, the, the, the types of soils will be called as alluvium so in general so whether it is from uh, salt water or a plain water all those soils carried by water is considered as alluvium or alluvial soils but when uh, soils carried by seawater that would be called as marine or deltas marine or deltas from uh, seawater then the soils carried by uh, lake water those transported soils carried by lake water considered as lacustrine so take note for that lacustrine then uh, also uh, we have the glacial or another term is till T I L L, no? glacier or till. So that, that the soil materials is carried by a glacier or an ice. So I think that that glacier or ice. Soil materials transported by a uh, glacier or ice, such as, for example, in avalanche. Uh, the soils carried by an avalanche will be considered as glacial or till. Uh, soil material carried by wind will be known as Aeolian, or the other term is loose. Uh, L E O S. So again, uh, soil materials carried, carried by wind it will be called as Aeolian or loss. Spell as L E O S S. That's loss. Another, we have uh, colubium soils or the uh, colubial soils. Uh, this soil is carried by gravity or rework sloping surfaces. For example, there is a sloping area. And uh, when the uh, rocks or soils from the above slopes uh, will be uh, slide down and form at the base of the mountain, those, those soils are considered as colubium or colubial. So another uh, transported soils we have organic. No? accumulates under water in wetland shallow lakes for example if you can observe uh, uh, leaves or any soil materials that has been uh, accumulated underwater on wetlands in shallow lakes those are considered as organic transported parent materials so take note for that So we have a uh, physical withering. Okay. So when we say uh, physical withering, 
we're uh, considering the changes in the particles of rocks uh, physically the physical changes for example from larger particles broken down into smaller particles in this physical withering or uh, example of uh, physical uh, properties as a result of physical withering we have changes in color from light to brown soils uh, physical and also uh, waters affect uh, physical withering okay physical withering operates largely on rocks splitting them into individual mineral grains okay uh, what are some uh, processes that would affect the physical withering so one of the process that affects uh, physical withering is temperature okay so in uh, varying or differences differences in temperature or changing temperatures act on uh, rocks then rocks would expand or, or maybe contract or uh, when uh, colder temperature the rocks would freeze and when temperature changes to higher temperature then the rocks would thaw or melt so a variation in temperatures expands or contract or freeze and thaw uh, rocks resulting the rocks to be uh, broken down physically so varying temperature okay another uh, process that would affect physical withering is erosion uh, just uh, a while ago we made mention of different uh, types of transported sewers by the actions of uh, waters uh, ice and wind okay waters is the major agent of soil erosion okay when uh, runoff or moving water uh, running on uh, slopes or running on soils so uh, some of the soil particles will be scraped up uh, will be removed and transported to other areas uh, making uh, some soil particles broken down physically so also glaciers uh, such as uh, till or uh, wood soils carried by the actions of ice uh, also responsible for uh, erosion there's some erosion due to the ice and also wind also acts as an agent of physical weathering because there are some wind erosion such as for example we have just made mention that the types of soils that has been transported through wind as uh, eolian or uh, loose okay so erosion through wind usually happens on the arid region where the major agent of erosion is the wind but in philippines uh, the major agent of erosion is water as one of the components of climate so another uh, processes that would affect physical withering is plants no? root penetration so uh, root penetration and expansion so uh, for example some roots of the plants will penetrate on rocks and even uh, go inside the cracks of the rocks and thereby uh, broken broken down or uh, uh, broken down rocks because of the actions of root penetration and also plants do expand rocks so that rocks will be decomposed into uh, smaller particles that is physical withering another, another process that would affect uh, physical withering is unloading okay uh, uh, unloading this could be an example of this one is uh, overburden due to uh, the pressures of the uh, vehicles and uh, sa mga greeting no? uh, we, when the area has been greeted when the area has been uh, open for uh, development of roads and highways then there are some unloading uh, overburden pressures of the area no? then the rocks would be, would cracked and rocks would be exploited or scraped up thereby uh, broken downing the big rocks into smaller rocks so there's some physical withering and there's some processes that would affect physical withering. So thank you for that. 
Okay, when we have physical withering, we do have uh, chemical withering. Of course, uh, operates on high surface area of individual grains. So, I mean to say, uh, surface area, I mean to say, we're talking about the uh, available spaces that is available for chemical reaction. And this uh, surface area is related to the particle sizes of the uh, of the minerals or rocks that would be subjected to withering. Okay, uh, the bigger the particles, the smaller is the surface area, and the uh, smaller the particle sizes, the larger is the surface area, and the larger the surface area, the faster is the chemical reaction. Uh, so that uh, rocks and minerals of finer particles would have a uh, uh, past process of withering because of past chemical reaction because of the higher sur surface area in a small particles So what are the different agents of chemical withering? Uh, under tropics and uh, humid humid region so the major agent of chemical withering is of course water Okay, one other process of withering we have hydration Okay so hydration is the driving force of all withering hydrate solutes. You know, see hydrate solutes, uh, meaning to say dissolves solids in a solution. Uh, some examples of the solutes, which is solids in soil solution, are the swell particles or swell uh, minerals or rocks uh, under soil what under uh, soil solution. So hydration from the word hydra is water. So attractions of water molecules for a charged ions. Excuse. <coughs> Another process is <coughs> hydrolysis. And say so hydrolysis from the word hydro water lysis broken down. When you say hydrolysis <coughs> broken down of particles by the action of water. Okay, breaking a band with a splitting of water. So uh breaking a band with splitting of water. <coughs> so we have example in here. <coughs> So field spar is one of the examples of <coughs> minerals or rocks. No? Field, sp field spar is potassium aluminosilicate. When uh, react with water, this field spar will be broken down or uh, breaking a band of different <coughs> atoms present in the field spar. So in this particular example, when a field spar is subjected to hydrolysis, the potassium component of field spar has been detached from the field spar, resulting into unstable field spar after uh, chemical withering. So think about that. So you see hydrolysis broken down of field spar into unstable field spar, wherein the potassium released into the soil solution. Okay, so. Comparing hydrolysis and hydration, hydration is just the water will be adsorbed, adsorbed into the into the materials suspended in the solution. <coughs> okay, uh, hydrolysis is also a major agent, a major processes for chemical reaction. So the harder the minerals, the difficult to be hydrolyzed. And on this particular example, uh, during chemical withering, uh, one of the factors that would affect withering is the parent materials. In this particular particular example, the parent materials is field spar. The component is aluminum, potassium, silicon, and oxygen. Of course, the resulting sewils would expect that the sewils will reach in potassium, potassium and reach in aluminum, 
after a complete process of uh, withering. Another pieces of uh, processes in chemical withering we have carbonation. Okay, reaction with carbonic acid. Okay, so for example, uh, carbon dioxide and water so react together forming into the H2CO3. That's H2CO3 is the carbonic acid. And then the carbonic acid dissociates forming into a weak acid. Then uh, this acid from the uh, carbonic acid react with, uh, for example, react in limestone, calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate example of limestone. When limestone react with uh, carbonic acid, then the limestone rocks will be broken down, will be withered into calcium and bicarbonate. Take note, uh, this is just an example. Carbonic acid react with uh, rocks, example is calcium carbonate, but uh, carbonic acid could also react to different types of rocks. In this, in this example, the rocks is calcium carbonate or the limestone. Then limestone will be broken down into calcium and bicarbonate. Alright, this is an example. It could react to any other types of rocks in the soils. That is carbonation. Another example, we have uh, acidification. Of course, uh, reactions with a stronger acid. Of course, in a particular example, uh, canina, carbonic acid is a uh, weak acid but this time uh, acidification reactions with a stronger acid so organic acids from plants decomposition bacteria and etc okay during the process of decompositions of plants and animal debris uh, there are some organic acids that would be released An example of that we have the humic acid we have the fulvic acid uh, we have the uh, salicylic acid, so there are many acids that will be formed during the process of decompositions of organic products. Uh, in this particular example, okay, we have the field spar in here, we have the potassium aluminosilicate react with acid, the, the RCOOH, these are uh, organic acids no? produced during the process of plant decomposition. So these acids react with the field spar so that the field spar will be broken down into uh, hydroaluminosilicate then the potassium will be released into the into the soil solution so in this particular example the field, the field spar has been broken down chemically because of the actions of uh, organic acids so strong acids like for example the acid rain sulfuric acid nitric acids uh, not enough to affect most soils Alright, so but uh, just to give an emphasis, the strong acids from organic acids is enough to decompose, to uh, wither the rocks. Although uh, there are some acids from acid rain, but it's not enough to decompose rocks. So another uh, process of withering, we have oxidation. So when we say oxidation, we're talking about the loss of uh, electrons by ion, usually iron. When we say loss of electron, this is another way, this is a gain of uh, positive ion. So example of this, we have the olivine or the potassium uh, iron silicate or the olivine react with water. Then the iron has been hydrolyzed from uh, iron positive 2 into uh, iron positive but the iron increases its balance and loses its electron so this is how the oxidation process has been considered in chemical withering decompositions of uh, olivine <coughs> okay so next is uh, or thinking about the different types of uh, rocks. Yes, rocks is the major uh, source of soils or the parent materials of all soils are rocks. And of course, different rocks, 
do have different types of uh, soils after a complete process of uh, withering. So different types of rocks, you have igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Yes, uh, you have some uh, description in there. Alright, so igneous formed from molten magma, classified by mineralogy and texture. Then sedimentary from the word sediment, formed by transport, deposition, uh, transported by water, wind, and gravity. Those are all considered sedimentary rocks. So any rocks, uh, any soils that has been transported by water, wind, and gravity, considered as sedimentary rocks. Then uh, metamorphic rocks, transformed by heat and pressure, often show branding. So igneous rocks could uh, be converted uh, automatically to metamorphic rock by heat and pressure. And so a sedimentary rock could be converted automatically to metamorphic rock by the action of uh, heat and pressure. Okay, uh, we have some examples of igneous rocks in here. So we have uh, the textures of igneous rocks, for example, so we have the coarse igneous rocks, we have the intermediate igneous rocks, and the fine igneous rocks. So some examples of uh, igneous rocks, we have quartz. Okay, uh, we have light colored minerals, example feldspar, muscovite. We have dark colored minerals, example of that is hornblende, ungite, and biotite. Examples of uh, coarse igneous rocks, we have granite. Uh, another example of igneous rocks, which is uh, intermediate or medium sized igneous rocks, we have the rhyolite. Then the uh, fine uh, igneous rocks, we have the field site and obsidian. So, these obsidian rocks, uh, these are some examples of rocks that would uh, float in water. These obsidian rocks. Right. Uh, igneous rocks also classified based on uh, color. So from uh, left to right, from granite to diorite to gabbro to peridotite. So take note that uh, granite is more uh, lighter in color compared to diorite. Diorite is more lighter compared to gabbro, and gabbro is more lighter compared to peridotite. Meaning to say, itong dito sa right side, uh, moving to the right side. So the color of the rocks becomes darker. Okay. So usually in board exam, the question is which of the following rocks is considered lighter or darker compared to the other. So com just take note of the of the continuum of colors. So uh, example of sedimentary rocks. Okay. Sedimentary rocks composed mostly of Example is sandstone. No? So sandstones composed largely of quartz. Because sandstone composed of quartz and quartz is one of the example of the hard hard uh, minerals, hard rocks. So therefore sandstone resistant to withering because quartz is very resistant to withering. Okay? So largely quartz resistant to withering except in hot with tropical environments. Okay, uh, sandstone, although this is resistant to withering, but under hot and with tropical environments, sandstone will be withered because there is a varying uh, temperature, hot and wet. Okay, and the presence of water in uh, with tropical environments would uh, subject sandstone to withering. Another example of sedimentary rocks, we have limestone. So example of limestone, we have calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate will, could, also, could also be called as calcite or uh, calcitic limestone or another name, we have the ground limestone. So limestone, calcium carbonate precipitated from oceans withers completely to release calcium and bicarbonate. Yung mga, yung mga sediments in the ocean floors, for example, uh, yung mga, what's that? Corals, 
in the sea these are limestones when withers form into calcium and bicarbonate okay another example of rocks we have sedimentary rocks we have shale shale is a compressed clays withers to release clay so compressed clays or uh, conglomerate or aggregate of clays that is considered shale when shales decompose on withers uh, withers to release clay okay so the examples of uh, sedimentary rocks the other one we have the metamorphic rocks transformed by heat and pressure okay so for example when sandstone change into other form through metamorphic processes form into a quartzite so meaning to say the quartzite the parent material of quartzite because uh, after metamor after metamorphosis is from sandstone the shale when metamorph form into a slate limestone when uh, when metamorph form into a marble igneous form into gneiss usually is in board exam the question is uh, what happens when sandstones undergo a metamorph uh, metamorphosis process or when metamorph into other form the answer should be quartzite or uh, it could be uh, the other way around uh, the quartzite is derived from after uh, metamorphic processes then the answer should be sandstone so take note for that shale would metamorph into slate and slate derived from shale limestone metamorph into marble okay and, ag and igneous rocks metamorph into a knees or banding so ganun ang mga questions sa board exam so take note for that so next is uh, primary minerals so uh, primary minerals on the word primary prima uh, first no? primary minerals form in molten magma or at high temperature and pressure so my examples ng primary minerals we have the quartz ito yung mga uh, very hard minerals difficult to wither difficult to decompose because, because quartz is very hard uh, mineral another example of primary minerals we have aluminosilicates composed of aluminum silicon and oxygen aluminosilicates these are light colored other types of uh, primary minerals is ferromagnetician from the word ferro iron magni mag magnesium so the ferromagneticians are rich in iron and magnesium usually these are black uh, colored uh, minerals because of the presence of iron so example of quartz we have silica <coughs> only one minerals on this on this we have silica silicon Aluminosilicates, examples of these, we have the field spar because field spar composed of uh, aluminum, potassium, and silicon. And there's also a sodium in the field spar. So, field spar, sodium, calcium, or potassium field spar. Example of that is potassium aluminosilicate. These are light colored. And examples of uh, peromagneticians or the blocked uh, primary minerals, we have the olivin. Hornblende, augite, biotite, mica. Uh, these are the examples of the peromagneticians or the black, black primary minerals. Okay. So examples of secondary minerals, of course, secondary minerals. These are derived from primary minerals. So secondary minerals, chemical withering, uh, chemical withering products usually form in soils or sediments. Examples of secondary minerals we have clay minerals. Example of that, aluminosilicate clays. For example, aluminosilicate clays. These are clays containing aluminum and silicon in their structure. So that is the clay minerals. And then you also have hydrous oxide of clays. Uh, now, if you can recall during the uh, first slide of the discussion, so we made mention that the mm, the last product of withering is hydrous oxides of iron and aluminum okay clay minerals containing hydrous oxide of clays are considered old soils and these are not fertile soils ok 
Okay, usually these are acidic cells. So examples of aluminum silicates, we have kaolinite, montmorillonite, and so much more. We also have illite, we have the uh, halocyte, we have the vermiculite, many examples of that. So examples of hydrous oxide, we have gibbsite, aluminum hydroxide, hematite, iron oxide. So hematite uh, this is one of the uh, hardest secondary minerals, hematite. Okay, so in hematite and gibbsite, this uh, other term for this, they are called as pure siski oxides. The aluminum silicates are considered as layer of aluminum and silicon oxides. Okay, so in these uh, clay minerals, particularly the aluminum silicate clays, there is a layer of aluminum and silicon in their structure. Uh, distinct order arrangement of layers of iron and oh sorry, aluminum and silicon oxides in their structure. As compared to the pure Siski oxide, no arrangement of aluminum and silicon in their structure. Walang exact arrangement of this. Okay. So uh, another example of secondary minerals we have limes. So example of limes we have carbonates. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, calcium carbonates, or calcite or calcitic limestone, dolomite. Uh, we have calcite, dolomite. Another example: magnesium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, calcium oxide. Those are just uh, among the examples of limes. No? Okay. Note that uh, limes moderately soluble bases. Uh, it means bases they are not acidic. Uh, moderately soluble, they can be uh, they can be dissolved in water and also in a uh, slightly acidic solution. Other examples of secondary minerals we have evaporites. Examples of that the classes of evaporites we have chlorides sulfates nitrates example of these evaporites we have the halides actually halides is the sodium chloride or the salt table salt in a equivalent our examples of evaporites we have the gypsum the gypsum is the most uh, brittle uh, most easily withered secondary minerals the lichenitium decomposed no gypsum uh, take note the formula of gypsum we have calcium sulfate sulfate that water an example of evaporites we have the nitre no? uh, these evaporites are very soluble occur only in desert areas due to evaporites from the word evaporites that areas that is high in temperature where evaporation is uh, very active so we can observe halides uh, gypsum Nitre in uh, arid region, uh, example of Saudi Arabia. So these are uh, secondary minerals. Now uh, there are some examples of secondary minerals in here. Okay, uh, secondary minerals we have by example we have kaolinite, montmorillonite, vermiculite, hydrous mica, chlorite, and allophane. And we have uh, what type? Of secondary mineral is kaolinite. So kaolinite is a 1 is to 1 non expanding, meaning to say, 1 is to 1, one layer ng silicon and another one layer of aluminum uh, forming into a kaolinite. Non expanding, meaning to say, the water cannot uh, absorb into the structure of kaolinite so that uh, the soils will not expand. The, it is also called as fixed type. Okay, so uh, lack of internal surface. So will I surface in between, so that water cannot enter in between spaces, uh, so that the soils will not expand. There is strong bond between particles that uh, water cannot uh, penetrate within particles because of the strong bond. Then we have the CEC. Uh, CEC actually is the cation exchange capacity. So, ang cation exchange capacity, baba lang, from 13 to 15 centimol 
per kilogram. Another unit ng uh, CEC is uh, milli equivalent or ME per 100 grams of swills. Swilling potential almost none. It will not swill because it will not expand. It will not expand because a uh, strong bond between particles. The water cannot penetrate between or within uh, the internal surface of this. Uh, types of uh, mineral okay swelling it will not swell it will not shrink uh, it, it is fixed type specific surface area so very small surface area because wala siyang internal surface okay small ang surface area compared to the other because walang internal surface so amount more unite to is to one meaning to say is so the lawang layer ng silicon and isang layer ng aluminum so ang aluminum sandwich between the layer of silicon this is an expanding type okay why because a very weak bonding uh, very weak bonding between uh, particles so that the water can penetrate on internal surface area and because it has an internal surface area it must have a high swelling potential and high cation exchange capacity so maraming ions maraming uh, mga uh, elements and atoms that can uh, penetrate into the surface area so the swells rich in uh, mount marginite is considered uh, fertile swells high swelling potential but it is not good for construction because it will swell and shrink swell during rainy season and shrink during, during dry season so that after dry season, when there is a heavy rains, magkaroon ng landslide ng mga lupa na ito. So ang surface area niya, taas because of internal surface area that could be penetrated by water. Another example of secondary minerals, you have vermiculite, 2 is to 1. This is non-expanding as compared to Mount Magyar, non-expanding because the, the internal layer of these uh, types of minerals has been uh, blocked with ions so I mean to say mayroon siyang internal spaces but the internal spaces has been lack o mayroong nakabara na mga ions usually the ions that has been uh, blocked that has been fixed into the surface of this vermiculite usually are potassium and ammonium so of course uh, uh, it has a great expansion Okay, high in swelling potential, specific surface area, baba compared to Mount Merlinite. Okay, we have hydrous mica, 2 is to 1, non expanding. Okay, and chloride, you have 2 is to 1, is to 1, non expanding, and many examples of that. Okay, but I want you to uh, focus on the specific surface area. Again, uh, the finer the particles the higher is the surface area then but uh, the surface area of these particles is uh, varies and uh, has a total surface area compared to the other like for example Mount Marginite has a larger surface area compared to colonite that's because of the internal layer internal surfaces marong internal surfaces and Mount Marginite compared to colonite and uh, CEC, the cation exchange capacity, also would tell us how uh, fertile is the soil. In this particular example, um, mataas ang CEC ng Mount Marginite at saka Vermiculite so that we can uh, conclude that Mount Marginite and Vermiculite, these are fertile soils, soils compared to other uh, soil types uh, in these uh, particular uh, slides. Okay, so that's it. Okay, so withering rates. Now, uh, we're talking about withering rates. So, uh, we'll be also uh, talking about the hardness and softness of different uh, minerals, be it uh, primary or secondary. In this particular example, the withering, the withering rates of uh, minerals, regardless of primary or secondary, so among the minerals regardless of primary and secondary 
the hardest minerals are the jutite. Okay, take note that uh, minerals containing iron, they are considered as hard minerals and difficult and slow to wither because iron is very hard, no? Uh, iron. Alright, so this particular example, the jutite is the hardest rock, then followed by hematite, then the the soft, uh, the softness, the softest rock, or the rocks that would easily be withered, is the gypsum. Okay, just take note for that. Rich in iron, matagal, ma withered, matagal, ma decompose, and uh, pag maraming calcium, madali, ma decompose, madali, ma withered. Okay, so look at the arrangement. Okay, jutite, mas gahit sa kumpara sa hematite. Hematite, mas gahit kumpara sa gibsite. Then gibsite, mas gahit kumpara sa quartz, so on and so forth. So for exam, uh, how this particular type of withering rates would uh, appear on the board exam. The question is usually, which of the following rocks would wither easily? Or kaya, which of the following rocks uh, would uh, difficult to decompose? Or difficult to wither? So take note the arrangement. If you can make an arrangement, if you can make uh, What's this? So we can make an um, acronym, okay, so that the arrangement will not be affected, then do it. For example, uh, Juhima Gikwale. So you can, you can have your own uh, mnemonics for this, okay? But uh, the thing is, rich in iron, difficult to decompose, rich in magnesium and calcium. Uh, these are easily to decompose easily to easily withers okay so in this particular uh, examples so minerals on the top slow to wither because they are very hard and minerals uh, on the bottom they are the fastest to withers because they are very soft like that so another presentation is <coughs> okay Okay, oliven, this example of primary minerals, no? Okay, most susceptible to withers. So, nasa taas, this one is mas uh, humok, mas humok, dali sila ma withered. Okay, compared to dito sa baba. So, therefore, oliven would withers easily compared to pyroxene. Then, pyroxenes would uh, withers easily compared to amphiboli, biotite. Mas homok siya kumpara sa feldspar. Ang feldspar, mas homok kumpara sa muscovite. Then quartz is di very difficult to wither. It's a very hard minerals. Okay. Uh, example, uh, yung mga sand na andyan sa ating mga baybayin, they are very difficult to wither because they are rich in quartz. <clears throat> okay, order of decreasing resistance to withering. So, I have arranged this one based on primary minerals as well as secondary minerals. Now, the hardest among uh, minerals, regardless of primary and secondary, is jutite. And, uh, and the, soft, uh, the, soft of all the, the very soft minerals is gypsum, regardless of primary and secondary. But among primary minerals, among primary minerals, the hardest minerals, the primary minerals, is quartz. And uh, the ones that easily be decomposed primary minerals is the oliven. So in this primary minerals column, pinakagahi ang quartz, pinakahomok ang oliven. And take note, the order of withering is quartz, pinakadugay, oliven, ang pinakadali ma wither. Or kaya ang oliven, ang pinakauna ma wither, Another tight ang sunod, our guide, ang last nga ma-decompose is quartz. And so as with the other column for secondary minerals, pinakagahi ang jutite, pinakahomok ang gypsum. But gypsum mas humok kumpara sa calcite, calcite mas humok kumpara sa dolomite, so on and so forth. So try to remember this uh, slide because on this slide, it would tell us which minerals are uh, difficult to withers compared to the other and which one is easily withers compared to the other all right so 
that's it now that's all about the sword formation with ring and rocks now uh, from the pre first slide we discuss uh, about uh, we discuss about the factors uh, that affect sword formation or the factors that affect withering we talk about physical withering we talk about chemical withering and uh, we talk about different minerals igneous secondary and metamorphic rocks and we also uh, discuss how uh, these particular minerals were transformed into other minerals upon the process of uh, metamorphosis so that's it okay so thank you for listening this all for today